darts, short darts, Steffens, whatever you're calling them, this is kind of the most important ammo that you could have in the nerf ecosystem that many of you probably aren't even trying to use right now because they've been kind of hard to get into for quite some time. Beforehand, we had like the Pack D magazines and we had half dart shooting long shots and retaliators and stuff like that. And it wasn't until very recently that we got half dart shooting flywheelers because what the foam kind of kicked this off, at least from what I know, that the half length or cut down Adventure Force waffle fired really good out of an FDL-3, and then Bradley Phillips did all the testing and kinda came to the same conclusion. These are really nice darts, at least cut down, for flywheelers. Now, darts like this, and then of course the worker half-length darts that we've been using for quite a few years now, are really good in springers, and that's what a lot of people will be using in their caliburns and stuff like that for competitive nerf, or if they just wanna hit what they're firing at. But these are probably the best to be using in an FDL-3 with a short dart nose and a semi-auto core and stuff like that. And that kind of kicked off an entirely new thing where people are converting strifes and swordfishes to use half-length darts and then of course all of the purpose-made short dart shooting blasters. You've got of course a whole range of pistols and revolvers now that are built from the ground up to shoot short length darts, but what about a primary size blaster? There is a few. There's of course the brand new Hummingbird, which was recently unveiled at Ragnar Oktoberfest 2019. That is absolutely beautiful. I really do want one, and I'll probably still try to get one in the very near future. And then there's the Griffin, and of course there's the Goblin, and there, there's so many, but let's talk about the Griffin, because I got my hands on one of these things at Ragnar Oktoberfest, and I was quite impressed. I really liked the idea of this blaster, and you'll probably understand why, but looking at it, yeah, it kind of looks like a CMMMG Banshee, maybe set up to use Glock mags or something like that. It's a really cool looking form factor, although it does have full-sized flywheels sticking out the side of it, which kind of ruins the look from this angle, but I'll have comments on this, because I kind of understand why this was done now, but the rest of the blaster, Man, so obviously the stock is what houses the battery, and you can use anything for a stock if you want to, but it does have its own 3D printable stock right here, which is beautiful in my opinion, because it basically works like an AR-15 pistol brace, and it's actually a full-length stock if you need to use it. I, this is the perfect length for me, and it should be, because I'm the one who measured it out and cut it and everything like that, because this is a 3D printed blaster. If you want to make your own, the files are linked down in the description, and it was made and designed by Flygonio. And this ticks all the boxes, basically everything. Full-size flywheel so you can get some serious performance out of it. It's got a rail on the top of it. It's got a rev trigger, which is important. I know Jangular pretty much wouldn't use an FDL-3 until it had a rev trigger and he got his wish and that's what he uses for competitive nerf now. And he's been using it to absolutely destroy the scene. Then it's got a trigger and my gosh, this trigger is amazing. It's gonna be a little hard to see on camera from this angle, but I just wanna kinda show really quick before I get close-ups. Yeah, that is a geared trigger, and it is butterly smooth. It feels just like using the Hailfire, except for it's in a much more compact, comfortable package. And yes, this is built from the ground up to use half dart mag. So you can imagine the overall size of this blaster, though it does have a stock, it is absolutely tiny and thin. The giant wheels on the side of it kind of ruin the thinness, but that's probably a good thing to have the wheels horizontal. I wasn't exactly thinking about this because a lot of blasters like the Strife and whatnot have the wheels vertical, which apparently horizontal flywheels give you better accuracy. It doesn't curve the dart up or down or anything like that, which could be really good. But I did notice that when I was holding one at Ragfest and looking down the sight, that is extremely easy to aim with. So not only do you get inherently better accuracy, but it's also way easier to line up your shot with something like this. And now I'm kind of convinced that this is the way to go. And of course we have like the flywheel, the world cages, which are much thinner that are also usually horizontal, but they don't generally hit the performance marks that you're looking for, which is why this one most likely uses full length flywheels. I don't know, I'm not a designer. I'm just making ideas here. And the grip, like you can tell that is exceptionally thin but it's very comfortable because it's wide, even for my small hands. And 
The ergonomics on this thing are completely on point. I like the fact that I could put the stock pretty much any way I want. So if I do want to shoulder it, I can totally do that. But most of all, when I'm holding it, I have this extra point of contact right there. So it's very easy for me to one hand it. And the magazine well, the reload, because this is kind of flared, is really easy to reload this blaster. It's built kind of from the ground up to be about as competitive as it could be for something that you can print out at home. It's not a very difficult print. It will take you quite some time and there isn't a whole lot of instructions, but the hardware is rather easy. You need your normal flywheels, your normal flywheel motors. I used Krakens in this one with Daybreaks. There's a variety of cages you can print out. I went with the 40 millimeter cage, which is the highest crust cage I have put yet. Yeah, as you can tell in there, there's not a whole lot of room for a dart to come through, that's for sure. And which should lead to some really, really nice performance marks. And we'll talk about that. There's different options for rev triggers, different options for magazine releases, and of course, stocks. And then you pretty much just need some wire, one rev switch, whatever you have. Just these kind of ones that we've been using in the hobby for a long time fits right in there. And there are some extras back here in the stock. None of this, in fact, works on mine right now because I think this switch doesn't work for my applications. I picked it up from Home Depot and that's probably why. But the design is just amazing. I really like how this thing feels in the hand and that's one of the reasons why when I got back from Ragfest this was one of the first things I tried to make. I printed it out of Isun Silk White PLA and Isun Silk Silver PLA and there was some bed adhesion problem. There's areas in here where you can see some black spots from my bed and there's some minor warping here or there which may be causing me the issues that I'm coming to but Overall, this thing feels so good. It's got a Picatinny rail so you can put whatever Picatinny accessories you want on it, like let's say this site right here. But the print was manageable and putting it together was relatively easy, even though there's no build guide that I know of for this entire blaster. I basically just used this picture to kind of figure out where things went and it helped me a lot which I really thank uh, Vlagonial for kind of having a 3D model of it online that I can easily take parts off of and see where things are supposed to go and how they're supposed to work. <sighs> but the main problem I'm having with this thing is with that high crush cage with Krakens on a 3S LiPo, this thing should be spanking and it kind of isn't. So really quick, like I'm gonna cut myself a magazine full of darts and I'm gonna put a battery in here. And the second problem I'm gonna have before I even get to that is the battery's located in the stock, right? But obviously I can't put like the thumb screws in here because then those would dig into my side. But I have to carry a screwdriver to undo this to get to the battery. I kind of wish that like on this, these things would like slide in there and they would be pinned on the side or something so I could very easily swap out batteries. That's something a lot of other blasters do that this one honestly doesn't. And that's another very minor flaw in my opinion, but something that should be addressed hopefully if there's ever a future revision of this. So these darts I know are usually pretty good in flywheelers and ah, this should be Ah, it sounds so good. This should be pretty darn good, but but let's see what it does inside of this. So 112 142 130 139, 145. It seems like the average is going up the more I use it. So maybe that has something to do with it. My slight warping in the cage and whatnot might be dropping my FPS, but I was expecting around like 160 on average. I've seen these exact wheels inside of a Foxfire do 170 plus. So I was kind of stoked to get a blaster this small that would hit that hard that you know, wasn't my FDL3. 131. 140. That's not bad, but that's about on par with like a pretty medium sized crush with normal flywheels like a uh, Bulldogs or something like that inside of a Strife. 
I was really hoping to get a little bit more out of this, and I am going to test one thing. I have not tried to use one of these darts through flywheels, and I honestly wonder if my performance is going to be any better. I will sacrifice this one dart. Nope, 130.5, so about what I would expect, which is slightly disappointing for a blaster like this. I was really hoping... And I'm not the only one. There are other people that contacted me that said they were having similar problems with the same cage with the same motors and the same wheels inside of their Griffin. So, I don't know. I, I'm still pleased with the performance. I mean, this is war legal pretty much anywhere I take it right now. And it is a nice, small, compact blaster. And the accuracy is pretty good for what this thing is. In fact, let's take it outside and see what it can do. Because I actually have not range tested this yet. I assume it's going to be accurate. Full Talon Mag of Cut Down Adventure Force Waffles. Let's see what the range and the accuracy is like, and more importantly, how the darts are flying, because that could give us a clue as to what's going on. Yeah, that was pathetic. And I'm pretty sure that dart came out kind of sideways. That was a bit better, but for 140 FPS is what I was getting out of it sometimes, that's like 100 FPS range right there. That's usually where my rival stuff hits. That does not seem good. Let's see. And yeah, there's definitely something going on. It could be hitting this muzzle, which would really suck because I really like that muzzle on there. It kind of helps you aim with it a bit. But... It's not exactly working the way it should. That definitely isn't right. There's another one. Yeah, I'm starting to figure out why this thing was hitting so low. So it's either something is hitting this, one of the motors or the wheels are slipping or something like that. It could be a lot of different things. Nothing to do with the actual design of the blaster, I don't think. But I would like to know if the other person who used this exact motor wheel cage combo had similar issues. So. Let's fire off the last couple of darts. Like all things considered, the darts that flew straight did a really good job and it felt really nice to shoot, but that is that is not 140 FPS ranges at all. That's, uh, again, I would say around 100 is usually where. That's, again, where my rival stuff usually hits. Very interesting. So there could be a lot of different little issues going on. The fact that somebody else had a problem with this exact cage motor set up everything leads me to believe I probably should just print out a different cage. One with not quite as much crush. Maybe the 40 millimeter is just a bit too much. Because again, I'm expecting like 160, 170 out of this thing. I'm getting like 50 FPS below that. And I've also noticed that when we were firing, I had darts that did kind of, I think we're hitting this muzzle, which I could remove, but that would make it a little bit harder to aim and whatnot. It would make it shorter, which would be cool, but I like the overall balance and look of this thing right now. I don't exactly want to do that. So I'm going to play with the cage in the very near future. But for everything else, I love this blaster. It is so well balanced. It feels very good in the hand. The trigger pull, the rev trigger, the magazine release, everything about this thing screams to me. I really, really like how small, light, and compact it is. This is definitely a cool blaster. And I do recommend that if you have some knowledge putting together flywheelers and you have a 3D printer, even like an Ender 3, it doesn't require a very big bed to print this thing out, you should probably give it a shot because this thing is really, really cool. As long as you have a couple of these Talon mags, and I do believe there's another mag well or mag release that will work for different types of magazines if you want to print them out. I like Talon, so I'm just going to use the Talon ones, but... Yeah, I, I definitely do like this blaster. I just need to figure out what the gremlins are with the performance, but definitely a winner, Flygonial. I love what you did. Very, very minor complaints and adjustments I'd like to see in the future. I did notice that he had like a, uh, a front kind of grip, mag grip kind of thing where it's just horizontal down here so you can hold it like this. Um, didn't see the file for that, but I would like to get my hands on that because that seems like it'd be very comfortable for something like this since there's really no kind of foregrip or anything to speak of with this blaster. A very cool, well, AR-15 SMG looking thing. I love it. Semi-auto, very competitive as long as we can get the performance where we want it. I love it. I really do think this is a good blaster. And I know there's a few different kinds of these. Obviously, like the Hummingbird and the Meeker and the Semi-Auto Short Dart FDL, which I'm going to get. I have one of those already in production. 
Uh, <laughs> I can only give you one guess what that thing's gonna be hydro dipped in, but until I get the chance to get that, let me know what you'd like to see in developments of this, and if there's any kind of compare, maybe I should compare this once I get it working to like a, a Talon Claw or something like that. That might be a good video, but I'm rambling on and on. I'm Walkout My Seven. Thank you very much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta up.